was your thinking behind that? Was it a, a very conscious choice to choose that particular image? For what do you mean? For that, for that, for the Paris review. Well, they chose it. They, oh, they chose it. I had done. I had been after the reveal. I had been approached by everyone and their mother, um, who wanted the story, and it was really difficult because first, you know, I, I had people coming offering me book deals and movie deals, and then when I wouldn't take them, I was accused of holding out for more money and being difficult, and it, it just, it, nothing I could do or say, they would take what I say and then turn it into snark, and so v very smart people advised me, you can't stand up in a tsunami, just shut the fuck up. The best thing was um, my mentor at the time, David Melch, who, who is a very, another very precious human being and really helped me get through that time. He said, he said, be still and know that I am God. And he didn't mean know that he is God, but it's like, be still. And, and that's very hard. It's very hard when it was a, it was a horrible, horrible time. And I also felt like if I can't articulate why why I did it. I mean, it, to people looking at it, it looked like the Taj Mahal. You know, you have Madonna and Bono and fashion, this and that, and it was built popsicle stick by pop, popsicle stick. It was really built, like a lot of artists who create, an, like an oyster, create a pearl out of irritation, right? How many artists create out of uh, an attempt to heal? You have to do it. You have to order, you have a need for order, for beauty, for to make sense, you have to do it. You know, I think that's what fuels a lot of addiction. You, ha you will medicate if you don't somehow put what you have inside you. You have to create what you don't see. You have to create a bridge to the world. It's like Stanley Kramer, the director said, if two people see his work and one of them walks out and says, I never saw it quite that way, I've done my job. And all I knew is I had to allow people, I had to try to let people see what I saw and what I knew to be true. And um, it was by any means necessary by holding people's soul. I wasn't going to be transgressive and slam people against the wall. It was respectful of the spirit, coming in faith with it as best I could. Um, which meant that after the reveal, I could not lie, which to many people was like, wait a minute, everything was a lie. No, there was JT's truth, and then there's mine. And they're separate. So the thing is, what's funny was um, when, when you had, uh, like one of the things that happened during the trial is they presented all these things of like, um, from like she sold raccoon penis bones and they, there were um, uh, candles of, and, and jewelry of lot losers and, and I told my lawyer, redirect, redirect, and he, he didn't. What they didn't understand was, it's, was the punk paradigm, which was, um, I never did like a George Lucas, which I never, um, when I was in the hospital, we would do things like um, we had RTs, we'd say you must recreate, recreational therapy. And we would use their um, uh, arts and crafts to make leather bands. So I would, in their day glow paint, I would do bum flaps and leather bands, dirty rotten imbeciles, dead Kennedys, MRI, you know, um, millions of dead cops. And we would sell them at CBGB's, right? And I never thought, gee, I gotta pay minor threat a uh, licensing fee. I mean, I called him, it was all that we're equal. You're another schmuck on the bus. You know, I wrote for magazines. To me, it was very important that it's like, punk was about, we were gonna change the world, but it was also about anti-hero worship. So yes, there were all these businesses, but they were everyone's business. For me, like it, it was just like there were many different who, different people who embody JT, it was like, if you were inspired to make art, go and do it. So I never got a licensing fee from it. I often um, gave people money to try and get these businesses going, because to me it was like the punk spirit. The lawsuit, basically, uh, the book was optioned by Stephen Schoenberg for $40,000, $15,000 per year. When they, um, found out when the reveal came, Stephen Chamber got very excited. And he had a script, he had already paid someone to make, uh, the, do a script, but he wasn't happy with it, it sucked. 
Originally, Gus Van Zandt was going to do Sarah, but instead we did Elephant, which won the Palme d'Or in France. And, um, sorry, <laughs> Uh, we're going to have to talk later. <laughs> anyway, um, uh, he, the, um, he came to me and he said, I want to combine your life with JT. And I said, that's very interesting, but you need to tell me what you want to do because I couldn't articulate it yet. I, I was just beginning to understand. And so they basically came back and said, no, that's not how Hollywood works, sweetheart. You don't know? When Hollywood comes calling, you say, I am ready. And because the media was saying that I did this, you know, to meet Madonna, it's like, wait a minute, people didn't know who I was. Do you know how badly people treated me? When I was there, I was the assistant. So if anyone's ever been an assistant, you're the same as a bicycle messenger. You know how they treat bicycle messengers? I was a bicycle messenger. So it wasn't like often I would send the stunt double to go to the avatar, went to Brazil on tour, went to the after party in Japan where I stayed where I was safe in the hotel room with ice cream, okay? <laughs> so um, they basically said that if I give them all their money back and then three more years to make the movie and the kicker, my life rights. Sweetheart, some over here, Brad. <coughs> Um, but they wanted my life rights, which basically meant that I wouldn't even be allowed to be talking here. And it, to me, it felt like an attempted rape. I did not survive all this to have you tell me who I am. So are you uh, aware of all this international fame? And how do you deal? And is France the only country in the world enjoying your <laughs> Uh, walk. I think I want you to be my new avatar just to have that accent. I mean, no one would fuck with me like that. <laughs> you know, you know, right away, France was like, what was the big deal? I mean, there was a, there were magazines. I wrote for a ton of different magazines, from the, you know, free, you know, the newspapers to. When I knew where I was writing for the New York Times, and I was like, oh, shit. Because <laughs> um, I had no idea it would get so big. I was like, oh, shit, you're kidding me. And um, all of them went away. All of it. No one would, none of the magazines. They didn't ask me. They didn't talk to me. It was just like, like the scene of Dangerous Liaisons where they put up the fan. And just a few. There were just a couple, actually. There was a Lemon magazine and one site. A lot of them were owned by foreigners, actually. And France had the opposite reaction because they had had Roman Gary. And Roman Gary was this dude, this writer, who he was told he was too old and he wasn't um, just down anymore. And he entered this contest where you had to be under a certain age to win it. And he had his nephew uh, play this character he made up. And he won the award. And his nephew went and picked it up. Now, oh my God, thank God I didn't like do anything like that. Like took money. Can you imagine? They would have had me tarred and feathered. And um, and after when the, it was revealed, the French, the reaction was, oh, fantastique, wow! Because I think there's an understanding of how hard it is to write a book. I mean. The, everything was like wigs and sunglasses. No motherfucker, there were books. And they were really good books. Some better than others. I mean, I really like Sarah, and I think I like Harold Zinn. The, the Art is Deceitful is just like straight, I wrote that first, and that was just straight out like, yeah. And there was a lot of the writing that isn't so great. I, I really had, I didn't have the education. I mean, I was accused of dumbing down. No. <laughs> I, I really didn't know, okay? I mean, sixth grade was my last grade of completion. I was so fucking stupid that in the trial, I waived all my medical and legal um, confidentiality because I, I was so naive to actually think that the truth would set me free. Like, they were saying, you created this to cheat us out of our 40,000. And it was like, no, look, here's my history. Here's my school history. Here, see, I, I was a kid from the street. I was a homeless youth. I was all this shit. This is really me. This is this was created way before. This existed way before there was any any of this. 
<clears throat> but that was that's not what they were interested in knowing about. 